Hello, I am Reverend Irene Smith, and I'd like to welcome you to Generationally Speaking. Here at the table, we come and we discuss life issues, no matter what they might be. As we sit at the table with each generation, we all learn, we all grow, we all are inspired. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Generationally speaking. Hello, I am Reverend Irene Ford Smith. And I want to welcome you to Generationally Speaking 2024. God has been so good to us, each and every one of us. And I want to first say thank you for week after week, tuning in and listening and hearing and, and, and reacting and letting me know how much you have appreciated the, the guests that we brought on, the, the, the topics that we have shared. I can't thank you enough. For those of you who have been uh, supporting me on my YouTube channel, Generationally Speaking, I want to say thank you to uh, you as well and to the Now Network. Here we go again, 2024. And I'm just excited about what God is doing. In 2024, I'm looking forward to having some great topics. We're going to talk about I want to feel loved. So many of us don't feel loved. And I know that there's a reason behind it, the psychology behind it. But I want you to know that God loves you. But we need to know that in a more tangible way sometimes. We need to feel it in a way that perhaps we don't. So in 2024, we're going to talk about, I want to feel love. We're going to talk about romance and finance and the vulnerability that comes along when we are lonely and the mistakes that we can make. You know, Sam, uh, Samson, he made a big mistake, even though he knew that the road that he was traveling down was not the right one for him. But still, hey, he wanted some love. He wanted companionship. He wanted to be loved. And sometimes when we are in those places, we become vulnerable and we make mistakes. And all the bells are going off. All the alarms are sounding. And we decide to turn our head and look another way. So we're going to be talking about that in 2024. Not only are we going to be talking about romance, but we're going to be talking about trust and manipulation. Mm, 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 mm. When you put your trust in someone and they manipulate you for all the wrong reasons. But God has a word for us on that issue. And we're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk about uh, faith versus our emotional psychology. Ooh, what are you talking about, Reverend Smith? Hey, you got to tune in because the girl got some topics of conversation coming up in 2024. And then we're going to talk about healing and hope. So when it comes to faith and emotional psychology, we pivot right into healing and hope. Wow. You know, we have this hope and this encouragement and this faith that God is going to heal the person, that God is going to change the situation. But it doesn't always happen the way we want it to happen. Habakkuk talks about what happens when the floor falls out. What happens when the other shoe drops? He talks about what happens when there, when the fig trees, when there's no bloom on the fig trees. He talks about what happens when there's no cattle in the barn. Then there's there's no 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 there's nothing being uh coming forth out of the fields because no crops have been planted. Hey, we're going to talk about healing and hope. We're going to talk about help versus enabling. In 2024, we're going to get real on some conversation. We're also going to talk about finance, uh, finances in language that all of us can understand. That curse word that we don't always want to hear, budget. 
and tithes and savings and vacation and daily living. All of those things we need to talk about as a body of Christ, as a body of baptized believers. We're going to talk about rearing and raising our children. Is there a difference? Wait a minute, girl. You, you, you messing with my mind here. And then we're going to talk about technology era and these mobile devices and AI and the immediate access that we have for inf to information. There's so much that we're going to be talking about in uh, 2024. And I want you to be a part of those conversations because these conversations are meant to encourage you. Yeah. We all need to be encouraged. I don't care what our title is. I don't care how long we've been walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. We all need encouragement. At one point or another, we all need to be encouraged. So we're, we're going to be, you're going to be encouraged in 2024 through our conversations. Through our conversations, our desire and our prayer is to lift you, to encourage you, to allow you to know that you're not in the struggle by yourself. Mm, mm, mm. No, no. And then in 2024, I'm going to share with you my journey uh, to Cape Town, South Africa in October, my journey to Rwanda, uh, Africa uh, in, uh, in October of 20, uh, 2023. I'm going to share with you my journey. I'm going to share with you what I learned. I'm going to share with you my experiences. I'm going to share it through words and through the pictures and through interviews that I gathered while I was there. Yeah, you know, I talked to some people. I was I would not let that opportunity pass me by. Oh, no, no, no. And I'm, we're going to talk about a place of preparation that right now, wherever you are, you are in a place of preparation. Whether you're on the mountaintop or you feel like you're in the valley, you are in a place of preparation. Whether things are going well or it seems like every hellhound has been loosed on your, on your trail, you are in a place of preparation because God is always, ooh, what you say, girl? God is always preparing to take you to the next level. And the only way that he can take you to the next level is that he's got to prepare you. David uh, in Psalms 23, he says, Yea, though, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. David understood that God was preparing him. When he was that shepherd boy out there in the field with, 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 with those sheep, God was preparing him to lead a nation. And wherever you are right now, just know that God is preparing you. And whatever you do, don't despise small beginnings. Mm -mm. So you ain't got but two people who subscribe to your, your YouTube channel. So you you came on Facebook Live and nobody was there. Honey, let me tell you, don't despise small beginnings because everybody starts small. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Just keep being persistent. Keep trusting in the Lord. Keep persevering and watch God open doors. Ooh, you never know who he's going to bring you into contact with. You never know who he's going to allow your life to collide with. Just keep trusting because he knows. He, he said, I've already ordered your steps. I, I know the place that I prepared for you. I, I, I know that. All I want you to do is trust me. In that place of preparation, you might shed some tears. But every tear that you shed, remember that the God that we serve, he catches those tears. He makes notice of them. Whew. Praise be to God. He's numbered the hairs on your head. He knows your thoughts from afar off. There's nothing that he doesn't know about you. So in that place that he fights you, learn the lessons. Look around. Make notes. Grow in that place. Understand when you feel that hurt, 
uh, those words that are focused in, make a note and say, you know, this is how I never want to be when I have the opportunity to lead a group of people. This is how I never want to act when God allows me to play, to, to stand in a place of power. This is how I never want to talk when I have an opportunity to lead a group. Hey, in that place of preparation, just know that God is, he, he's preparing you. And you, you just got to be patient. Uh, you know, our ancestors used to say, uh, you can't hurry God. You just have to wait. You have to trust him and give him time. No matter how long it takes, he's a God you cannot hurry. <laughs> He'll be there. Just don't worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. I remember growing up at Mount Zion Baptist Church in a little town called Tacoa, Georgia, and hearing the deacons and the deaconesses and the prayer band and the sisters and brothers in the church singing that song. And I would sing that song too, but I didn't understand all that was behind those words. Because I was still young. I was still in my mother's house. My mother was still paying the rent. My mother was still taking care of the light bill. My mother was still buying the groceries. My mother was still buying the clothes to go on my back. My mother was still providing for my every need. I didn't understand it. Uh, but now, come on, somebody. Ooh, I understand it fully well. That he may not come when you want him. But God is always, always on time. So in 2024, we're going to be talking about what we need to do in this place of preparation. And yes, I plan to have some awesome guests, some young uh, voices to, to speak to us about where they are, and what they're doing and how they see God moving in their lives. Sp plan to speak to some younger people voices to, and to hear them where they are currently uh, positioned and what they see in the future. I plan to speak to some younger voices for them to share with me how they see the world today. Then I plan to speak to some, to, to those who, those sages, those, those who got some uh, years and I hear that from them, that uh, word of wisdom from them, you know, words of wisdom from them. Because older people, like myself, I'm old, but older people have wisdom. And they have wisdom because they have years behind them. They have wisdom because they made the mistakes already. They have wisdom because they understand the pitfalls. They've seen them. They've fallen into them. They have wisdom that they need to share with the younger generation as you move forward. Yes, and there's a lot of conversation I want to talk about the church in the direction some people are, are expressing a concern about the direction of the church, about the music in the church, about the dynamics of the church. One thing I know for sure, God has already said that on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So I don't care what you're saying. I don't care what the complaint is. God already said, Jesus told us his church hey, going to prevail. And I want to talk about these rumors, how we as, as believers need to handle the rumors and scandals that we hear about um, that leaders um, in our community, in the church, are being accused of. I think you have to be careful. Please be careful. Be careful about what you repeat. Be careful about what you believe, what you hear. Be careful. Be careful. Because remember, you don't have all the story. Remember, what you have is a slanted version. Remember, folks say things for a lot of different reasons. And they're not always good. So we're going to talk about these scandals as baptized believers. What, what do we, what, how do we address them? 
And as Christians, we are under assault. We are under assault. Folk are coming after believers and they're seeing all manner of evil about us. You've heard it, that we worship a Christmas tree. Oh, I don't know where that comes from. That we believe that Christ was born on December 25th. I don't know where all this stuff comes from. They That's the, the, the enemy. The enemy will take a portion of truth and he'll mix it with a lie and present it as fact. Hey, come on now. We are believers in Christ Jesus. We got to know our word. We got to stand on our word. We got to believe in our word and we got to know that God's word is true and amen. We got to know that. And so when the enemy comes, we've got to be ready for him. And yes, I have uh, written another book. Uh, Promise Me. Let me get it. Uh, Promise Me is a book for, there you go. Promise Me is a book I just recently uh, wrote. Uh, it is for a parent and a child. And it begins a conversation between the parent and a child. It's meant to be read together. Parent and child, guardian and child, grandparent and child. It's meant to be read together to promote conversation about uh, life. And it covers every aspect of, of life. I recommend that those in grades, uh, at least grade three, uh, third grade or fourth grade up, including college age students, read this book. It will it will benefit you as a, a student and a parent, and it will open a dialogue between parent and child that perhaps you not had before. Promise me, it is available um, at Barnes and Noble. It is available at Amazon, and of course, you can go to IreneSmith.com. And you can purchase the book directly from me. And if you purchase it directly from me, I will be able to uh, autograph the book. But the good news is this. I am actually giving Promise Me away to every child. So if you have a child and you want this book for that child, send me uh, an email to one generationally speaking uh, at gmail.com. I'll get your uh, address, send me your address, and I'll send you the book for your child because I believe that every child should have this book. And I don't want a dollar sign to stand in the way of you having conversation with your child about Promise Me. Amen. Well, you know, it's, it's going to be a great year. And I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about where he's taking this ministry. I'm excited about the events to, uh, that are yet to transpire. Oh, yes. Don't let me forget that on February, Sunday, February. Uh, let me just make sure of that date. Uh, we're having a great fundraiser. And I want you all to be a part of that event. Uh, it's going to be Sunday, February 25th, at uh, starting at 1 o'clock. It is a fundraiser for Generationally Speaking. Uh, I know you don't know, but what we do is we, uh, on Thanksgiving and Christmas, we uh, give out hot meals uh, to our seniors uh, in uh, senior buildings. Uh, we also, uh, in uh, August, we give out uh, coats, new coats to our to children in Nancy Moore, Maryland, a disadvantaged community. Uh, we give out brand new coats to uh, those students down there so they can go back to school with coats. We get gloves and hats, the whole thing, to make sure that they go back to school warm and comfortable. That's the least that we can do. So we're having this great fundraiser. That helps us to, to uh, fund these events. This year uh, in July, we're planning on having a big cookout at our senior building so they can come out. We're going to have music and fun and games and activities. We want our seniors to know uh, that they are not forgotten, that they are loved. And so that is the very least that we can do. And how can you help us? Well, the tickets are, are going to be on sale in, at Eventbrite. Uh, and you can go there, Eventbrite, and look for Generationally Speaking um, uh, Gala. And uh, you'll be invited to 
purchase a ticket there to support this event. And in your support, just know that it is tax deductible because we are a 501c3 organization. Amen. All right now. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is going to be doing. And I hope you are excited too. And the only thing that I can ask you to do is join hands with me. The only thing that I can ask you to do is tune in Wednesday nights uh, at 9.30 on the Now Network, that you will go to my YouTube channel if you have not already, Generationally Speaking, and whatever you do, please hit the subscription button. Those subscription buttons count. They mean a lot. So it tells me that you are riding with a sister and the sister needs you to ride with her. Amen. Well, to God be the glory. And um, I'm going to take now this opportunity to pray uh, for us as we go into 2020, as we are in 2024. Gracious God, our Father, we give you glory and we give you honor for taking care of us, for seeing us through another year, God. We thank you, Lord, for the doors that you opened in 23. And we look forward, God, with a great anticipation and expectation of what you're going to do for us in 2024, Lord God. We come, Lord, giving you glory and honor, God, because there's none like you. You blessed us over and over. And so we honor you, God, not because of our blessing, but because of who you are, God. You are Alpha and Omega, that you are the beginning and the end, that you are uh, the, the living bread, Lord. The, you are the living water, Lord God. You are, are all in all. There's none like you, Father God. We just thank you, Lord God. We we heard that, God, and we know that you are the lily of the valley, the, the bright and the morning star, the good shepherd, the great I am, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that whatever name we call you, we know that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Rapha, God. We know, God, that you are more than enough for us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We know that you have all power. So we thank you, Lord. We ask that you just continue to bless this ministry, Lord God. Bless all that tune in, Father God. And those who are tuning in right now, Lord, who are standing in the need of healing, Lord, we pray now, Lord, that you would heal their bodies, God, in such a special way, God. We pray, God, right now for those who are tuning in, who are in need, God, that even right now, that you would meet them at their point of need, God, that you would open the windows of heaven as you always have, God, and that you will continue to pour them out blessings in so many different ways that they will not have room enough to receive. We thank you, Lord God, for we know that you sit high, but yet, Lord, you know all things about your children and nothing is hidden from you, Lord God. So Father, right now, we just surrender our all to you and we say your will be done in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray and all of God's children say, Amen. Hey, as I always conclude, we want you to be inspired to be all that God has called you to be, to be informed, get knowledge, get wisdom. And then if you have inspiration with information, then transformation will take place. Amen. Whatever you do, tune into Generationally Speaking so that you can get all the wisdom, knowledge that you need to move forward in this life journey. God bless and peace out my brothers and my sisters. The network was in at CNN. If I get to CNN two months in, I get a call from Politico, a news organization yeah, yeah. to work full time. A black man at Politico named Terrell Mazel. He flagged my resume. He kept flagging my resume, he kept advocating my behalf. People are, to the audience, to this audience, I want to say, people are speaking your names in rooms that you don't even know they're speaking your names in. And that's what was my story. And if it had not been for Terrell advocating on my behalf, a black man, I don't even know in Washington, D.C., I would not be sitting with you today. Mm -hmm. That is a blessing from the most high. Thank you, Terrell. Um, but the pandemic happens, shuts down the internship program a week before that I get a full-time job. But God, like, who else is doing that on my behalf besides a higher power, a calling on my life? The same, you got to call on your life, baby. You got to call on your life. That's my head the whole time. So that's how I transitioned from Georgia to D.C. 
Then I end up working. Georgia won the election in 2021, I believe it was, the runoff election. John Ossoff and yes. Senator John Ossoff and Senator Raphael Warnock mm-hmm. ended up winning the election. I got a call if I was interested about an opportunity working for the working in the Senate for this for the Senator of Georgia, John Ossoff. Took this and ran with it. Mm-hmm. And I went to the Senate. I had a blast. The senator went to the same college I went to. And I had started looking into the college and start thinking about it and thinking about international affairs. I always been curious about what else was going out in the world, being from a small town like Tacoa. I was always interested in like, what else is out there? And I want to do international affairs. So I worked hard. I got a letter of recommendation from the senator. I put all my all my all my accolades, all my CNN, the New York Times. Um, city of Atlanta, working for Doug Shipman, in the city of Atlanta, um, now the city of Atlanta council president, then Woodward of Arts um, Center um, president, CEO. Those things were transformative. When I put those in my application, I didn't have the strongest grades. Again, I'm not gifted academically. What I am is a hard worker. And you, we spoke about that off the mm-hmm. scenes, about what that, that looked like. And because of that grind, and because of folks back home telling me I was gifted, I was able to go for that like I had to like I was you know they say fake it till you make it that's what I did so now I'm at Georgetown University on two scholarships one for Turkish Thank you.